Hi boys and girls, Mrs. Jockel back again for another week of grammar lessons. Today we are starting off with lesson number 129. 129. So go ahead and make sure you have your grammar simple solution book and open up to lesson 129. To go ahead and get started, let's look at number one. Choose the word that means something that has that happens because of something else. Would this be demonstrate, contrast, or effect? Well, I know we've talked about cause and effect before. So an effect is something that happens due to something else taking place. They use the example, an effect of being in the sun too long can be a sunburn. So the effect of being in the sun too long is that you can get sunburn. Uh, I might say the effect of the storm, where are my letters at? <laughs> Try typing again, there it is. The effect of the storm was that the power went out last night. Okay, so the effect of the storm was that the power went out. So because of the storm, the power went out. So see if you can come up with a sentence of your own for effect, or you can use one of the examples given here. Okay, number two says to rewrite the sentence, we need to add quotation marks. Remember when we have somebody talking, we need to put quotation marks around their exact words. So it says, are you sure it's not going to rain today? Asked Heather. So you don't have to rewrite the whole sentence, but we do need to show that Heather is talking and we're gonna put quotation marks in front of R and after the question mark because that encompasses all of what she is asking. Are you sure it is not going to rain today? All right, number three, choose the correct form of the verb. Use the verb sing. So this is an irregular verb. When we change it to the past tense, it goes to sang. Sing, sang, and um, let's see what we need here. Do you blank in the shower? Do you sing in the shower? Yes, I do. Grandpa always blank wherever he was. We would say grandpa always sang. We wouldn't say grandpa always um, singed wherever he was. And we know that this needs to be past tense because of um, the verb was at the end. All right, number four, words containing graph come from a Greek word that means right. Use what you know um, about other origins to match these words with their meaning. So graph means to write, like a homograph is a word that, two words that are written the same. Um, we've seen the word autograph, pictograph, and paragraph before at school. So a section of writing, we would call that a paragraph, right? So when we're writing a story, a section of writing is a paragraph written in one's own hand. So when you write something yourself, um, that would be an autograph. Auto means self. And then pictures that show data, that would be a pictograph. Graph is a way to show data. And so we learned about that in math class. All right, number five, the bicycle chain is irremovable. Irremovable, what does that word mean? Well, it has the main word removable in it, and then the prefix ear means not. So irremovable means it is not removable. Remember when we have prefixes added onto the words, we look for the main word or the root word and then see what's added on. Okay, over to number six. Choose the word to complete the sentence, write it on the line. We have the words suppose, frighten, and weather. Not the weather like outside, but like whether or not you're going to um, complete all of your work. Okay, so we had fun trying to blank the trick-or-treaters. 
We had fun trying to suppose the trick-or-treaters. We had fun trying to frighten the trick-or-treaters. We had fun trying to weather the trick-or-treaters. That doesn't make sense. And a clue would be, you know, trick-or-treaters, um, just from your own experience, you know that, you know, sometimes you might try to scare others at Halloween time, um, and trick-or-treating goes along with that. Okay, number seven, underline each verb. Choose past, present, or future to tell the tense of the verb. Okay, so it rained hard last night. So what is the action? What did it do? It rained. And if it rained, did that happen in the past, present, or future? A hint is that it was last night, so that would be the past. Joe will compare his spelling test with your spelling test. What is the action here? What will Joe do? He will compare. And if he will compare, it means it hasn't happened yet. So that would be a future tense verb. The ice cream melted in the sun. What did the ice cream do? It melted. And that would mean it's in the past tense. It already happened. That'd be very sad too. Okay, number eight, a subordinating conjunction expands a sentence and makes it more interesting. Choose the best subordinating conjunction from the word box to complete each sentence. Because, until, and unless are our choices. I wrote a letter to our cousin Frank, blank I want him to visit. I wrote a letter to our cousin Frank because I want him to visit. Shannon will wait until her injury has healed. Shannon will wait until her injury has healed. Okay, number nine, fill in the plural possessive noun. Remember, plural is more than one. Possessive means there's ownership. So the boys' jobs were greeting guests and setting the table. Boys is showing more than one boy. And then we put the apostrophe after the S because we're talking about all of the boys and their jobs. Um, so there's more than one boy and it's all of their jobs to greet guests. So apostrophe goes after the S. And lastly here, number 10, underline the adverb that tells where or when. Remember, adverbs describe the verb. They describe the action. Sometimes I eat too much ice cream. That is true. It tastes so good when you're eating it and then you get a stomach ache later. But when or where do I eat? Because eat would be the verb. Well, when do I eat too much ice cream? Sometimes. That's describing when I eat too much ice cream. All right, guys, that ends our first lesson. So that means we are up to lesson, whoop, here we go, 130 next. So if you are going to stick around, might as well, these videos are kind of short and sweet and just get it all done for the week. Or you can also pause and come back another time. But lesson 130 is up next. So let's go ahead and get started. Take a look at number one. What does the underlined word mean? That, that dog is erratic. So she shouldn't be around young children. Erratic, hmm, what does that mean? Well, if she shouldn't be around young children, that probably doesn't mean she's gentle. And steady, you know, kind of means calm. That doesn't sound like this dog. Changeable, though, if this dog is changeable, that means, you know, her mood could change. Um, you know, she could be nice one moment and then get kind of mean the next. That would be erratic. So I think those two words are closely connected. Number two, indefinite pronouns stand for people or things that are not named. So this is something new, guys, indefinite pronouns. A pronoun, remember, takes the place of somebody's name, um, but indefinite pronouns are standing for people or things that are not named. So like anyone can play for our team. Well, who is anyone? There's no name to the people we're talking about, but it's taking the place of all of the people that could play. Anybody, another similar um, indefinite pronoun to anyone, you know, anybody can go to the circus. Well, who is that referring to? Literally anyone. 
So that is indefinite, has no specific name to it. And then on the same lines as that, we have everybody, like everybody likes a good laugh. Well, who? Everybody. So that doesn't have a specific um, name to it. And then everyone, like everyone is welcome at our home. So they wanted us to select an indefinite pronoun from the box and write it on the line to complete the sentence. Blank can join our club. Her can join our club. No, that doesn't even make sense. So we're not going to say her. Them can join our club. No, that doesn't sound right either. Anybody can join our club. Yes, that sounds best. And it's also an indefinite pronoun because it's not really naming any specific person or group, but yet it's still taking the place of people. Um, so I know that might seem a little tricky or confusing, um, but we'll keep practicing with that in our future lessons. Number three, read the underlined word. Choose the word with a stronger shade of meaning. I knew mom was cross when she came straight to my room with a trash bag. Well, cross is a pretty strong word to begin with. Um, and it means to be, you know, angry or furious. But of the two choices, angry and furious, which one is a stronger word? Mom was angry or mom was furious? Yeah, furious. If mom was furious, look out. All right, number four, choose the word or words that mean a group of people who make laws and run communities. Sounds like our social studies unit this year. So would that be compare, natural resources, or government? A group of people who makes laws and run our communities would be our government. Um, and then they wanted you to use an example, uh, that word in a sentence. They have his aunt works for the government. Now, lots of sentences we could write here. How about... The mayor is the leader of our local government. Okay, you could say the president is the leader of our national government. You could say that the government is made up of three branches. Remember learning about that, judicial, legislative, and executive. So see if you can come up with a sentence using the word government. And then move on to number five on the next page. Draw a line to match the underlined expression with its meaning. Okay, so we have be sure before you act, too small or in trouble. Uh-oh, his goose is cooked. Well, if you're saying your goose is cooked, that doesn't sound good. So that would mean that you are in trouble because a goose being cooked, that's bad news. All right. Um, it is never a good idea to count your chickens before they're hatched. You know, when you think about it, you might you could count all the eggs and you expect chickens to come out of them, but sometimes there might be, you know, a dud in, in the nest. And so you might think you're going to get 10 chickens, but you might only get eight or nine. Things happen. So that kind of means to be sure before you act, okay? So be sure of something before you act on it or, you know, start relying on it to be true. Brad complained that his paycheck was chicken feed. Well, if you look at the chicken feed down here, it's very small little specks of grain or corn of some sort. So if you're saying, you know, your paycheck is like chicken feed, that means he felt like his paycheck was too small, not a lot of money. Isn't that how we all feel? <laughs> Wait till you guys start working and getting a paycheck. All right, number six, write the plural of country. And remember, it tells us to change the Y to an I and add ES. So for countries, we change the Y to an I, and then we add the E and the S to make countries. Number seven, choose the correct pronoun. Krista rode the bike and parked it or them outside. 
Well, she's only riding one bike, so she would have parked it outside. It is taking the place of saying bike again, so that would be a pronoun. Okay, number eight, underline the concrete noun, and then it says to circle the abstract noun. Remember, concrete is something that we can physically see, feel, or touch. So Jose needs more sleep than I do. Remember, a noun is a person, place, or thing. So Jose is a noun. He's a person. Um, and it's a person that we can see in existence. And then for the abstract noun, something we, we can't really physically see on its own um, would be sleep. We know sleep is a thing. It's something that we all need. Um, but we, we can see what sleep looks like when an animal or a person is doing it, but we just can't look at sleep on its own. So that would be the abstract noun. Okay, on number nine, we need to fill in the blank with a word that fits the meaning of the sentence. Our blank or the team we're playing is Lake School. So the team you're playing against, you call them your ally your champion or opponent? Well, it would be opponent. Our opponent or the team we're playing is Lake School. And number 10, choose the correct form of the verb. Use the verb tell. Just blank the story, Christopher. Just tell the story. And then last night, so this would be past tense, last night he told the story. No, we have to change it to told. This is an irregular verb. Last night he told that story with too much detail. All right, guys. So that ends our second grammar lesson for this week. Up next is grammar lesson. See if I hold it the right way. Nope, upside down. <laughs> 131. 131. Only a few more weeks of grammar left. 140, I believe, is our last lesson, so we only have a couple more weeks after this. I think this will be the first year I've had students complete the entire grammar book. Usually, we somehow get behind during breaks and stuff, so pretty exciting. All right, lesson 131. Let's get it done. Number one, fill in the blank with an abstract noun, a person, place, or thing we can't physically see. All friendships need honesty, all friendships need moms, or all friendships need iPads. Well, you might think in order to get along with your friends or to be able to communicate with them that you need an iPad, but that would be a concrete noun. So we're going to go with honesty. Honesty is something we can't physically see, but we know it is a thing that we can have and we can exhibit. We just can't see it on its own. Number two, choose the adverb in each pair. Remember, an adverb is like an adjective that's describing the verb, the action word. So sweetly and sweet. Well, a pair can be sweet or the person could be, um, you know, acting sweetly. So sweetly would be the adverb in the sentence. Sweet is an adjective. Tight and tightly. Tightly could be how you tied the knot. You tied it tightly. So that would describe how you tied it. That would be the adverb. Angrily or angry. Angrily. So maybe she was angrily waving her hand. So angrily is describing how she waves her hand, describing the verb. Rough and roughly. Roughly would be the adverb. Um, let's see. You know, he was playing, they were playing roughly outside in the grass. Um, roughly is describing how they played. Notice how all of these adverbs ended with the suffix L-Y. That is a good hint um, as to an adverb if it ends with the suffix L-Y. Not all of them do, but that is a very common pattern we see with adverbs. 
Okay, number three, read the underlined word. Choose the word with a stronger shade of meaning. Parker felt alarmed when he didn't see his car parked where he had parked it. Um, Parker felt alarmed when he didn't see his car where he had parked it. So what's the stronger word for alarmed? He felt afraid or he felt panicked? Panicked, yeah. Afraid is one thing, but when you are panicked, you are extremely afraid and um, kind of freaking out a little bit. Okay, number four, a subordinating conjunction expands a sentence and makes it more interesting. We did this in another lesson. We're going to use since, until, or unless to fill in our sentences. We played kickball in the backyard, blank, it got too dark. We played kickball in the backyard until it got too dark. I will bring the treats today, blank, you brought them last time. I will bring the treats today since you brought them last time. And number five, underline the verb in the sentence. That's the action. Anthony and Devin had eaten their pizza out on the deck. Well, what did Anthony and Devin do? They had eaten their pizza. Okay, had eaten is using a helping verb. We could have said Anthony and Devin ate their pizza on the back on the deck, um, but had eaten also works as the verb. You just have to use the helping verb had. All right, over to the next page, number six. We need to insert correct commas and quotation marks in our dialogue to show that somebody, uh, that people are talking. Mr. Russo said, practice doing sit-ups for the fitness test. Well, we need a comma after said to separate our speaker from their words. And then quotation marks around the exact words of Mr. Russo. Practice doing sit-ups for the fitness test, okay? This year, I'm going to reach my goal, declared Damien. Well, Damien is saying, this year, I'm going to reach my goal. So quotation marks around his words and a comma after goal inside of the quotation marks to show um, the separation between the words and our speaker. All right, on number seven, we need to choose an adjective or an adverb to complete each sentence. So whichever one fits better, um, using faster, fastest, and more faster. The blank way to get to the city is by subway. The faster way to get to the city, or the fastest way to get to the city, or the more faster way. I don't like more faster at all. So I'm thinking the fastest way to get to the city you're comparing this way to all the other ways, so it is the fastest. And then you might say to someone, can you move more faster? No, can you move faster? All right, number eight, using a prefix to write a word that means the same as what's in parentheses. They give us some example prefixes and their meaning up here in this chart if we need it. You will lose a point for every word you spell wrong. So I'm looking up in the prefix chart. I see the meaning wrong matches the prefix miss. So if you are spelling something wrong, we had this as an actual spelling word this year, miss spell. We add the prefix miss and keep the root word spell. Miss spell. Don't misspell it as you write it in. Number nine, choose the word to complete the sentence. Write it on the line brainstorm, observation, and hypothesis. Sounds like a lot of science words. When you use your senses to gather information, you are making an brainstorm, an observation, or an hypothesis. Well, we've done this many times in class. We make an observation when we use our senses. And number 10, write the past tense form of each verb. Use the chart for help. So we could look at the past tense verbs over there. Gave, grew, was, and made. Our class blank gifts to needy children. Our class gave gifts. It blank our class project for the year. It was our class project for the year. Remember, past tense. We blank tomatoes and cucumbers in the school garden. We grew tomatoes and cucumbers in the school garden. 
All right, guys, nice work. Lesson 132 is up next. Lesson 132, that is our last grammar lesson for this week. And then we will continue on in the next couple weeks to finish out our grammar for the year. Lesson 132. All right, here we go. It says, finish the dialogue. Add uh, quotation marks and commas. So we get to kind of add in our own um, ending to the, the dialogue here. Rhonda whispered, and here's what they said. A comma after whispered first to separate our speaker from her words. I want to leave. So then quotation marks around what she is saying. And then we do need to add a period. Don't forget because this is the end of her talking. So let's see, I might do something different. Rhonda whispered, and then I would put a comma, quotation marks. I don't know if you can quite see that. I'll move it up a little. Okay, Rhonda whispered, I'm scared of the dark, exclamation mark, quotation marks. I'm just going along with this little picture here of the campers. So. Um, just to trace over what I did, you would need to add your comma after whispered and then quotation marks around the words that Rhonda is going to say. I'm scared of the dark. Okay, you could add your own in there. And then Sherry agreed, comma, I will follow you. So quotation marks around what Sherry is saying. Now, I'm gonna add my own example here. So, Sherry agreed, comma, quotation marks, me too, quotation marks to end it. So, Rhonda whispered, I'm scared of the dark. Sherry agreed, me too. So, you could add one of these examples or you can come up with your own. Pause the video if you need a moment to Jot that down. All right, number two, the root calm means together, okay? And so what do you think the underlined word means? Well, we wrote a composition about the class trip. Well, wrote, you know, writing is involved. So this could be spelling words, pictures, usually you're drawing or sketching, not writing pictures. Um, but a composition actually means to put words together. Um, so if you're writing a composition about the class trip, you're writing like a story. You're putting words together to tell about it. Okay, number three, choose the correct form of the verb. Use the verb ring. This is another irregular verb. So when in the past tense, it does change. The school bell blank 10 minutes ago. So this would be in the past, we would say the school bell rang. Change that I to an A. The school bell rang 10 minutes ago. Let's blank the doorbell to see if she's home. We would use the present tense verb ring. Let's ring the doorbell. Number four, fill in the blank with the word that fits the meaning of the sentence. Dad likes to blank when he is tired. So dad likes to work when he is tired. I certainly don't like to work when I'm tired. Dad likes to hike when he is tired. Are you kidding me? That would make me even more tired. I'm gonna say dad likes to doze when he is tired. That means he likes to sleep, take a nap. Okay, number five, add the prefix dis to the word and then tell the meaning of the new word. Dis plus ability means you know, makes the word disability and it means to have no ability. So if we add dis and respect together, we're gonna get the word disrespect. And since dis means no, the meaning is no respect, having no respect. All right, last page here for the week, number six, underline the adverb that compares. These lines need to be drawn straighter than this. How do the lines need to be drawn? Straighter. Remember, adverbs describe the action, the verb. 
and our verb is um, drawn, and Strader tells us how they need to be drawn. Okay, number seven, choose the word to complete the sentence, write it on the line, and it wants us to circle the vowel consonant vowel pattern. All right, so out of fever, broken, and climate, Paul's watch was blank before he had a chance to use it. Well, broken seems to be the best word choice. Paul's watch wouldn't have a fever. Um, Paul's watch was broken, and the vowel consonant vowel would be the O, K, E. Remember our vowels, A, E, I, O, U. So O, K, E is our vowel consonant vowel pattern. All right, number eight, underline the concrete noun in the sentence. And then it wants us to circle the abstract noun. We did this in a lesson before. My aunt says that ice cream is a delight. Well, concrete nouns, person, place, thing. Ant is a person and ice cream is a thing. We can both see ice cream in an ant, um, the person ant, not the little insect. Um, so those would be concrete nouns. And then as far as the abstract noun, delight. Being a delight is a thing, um, but we can't actually see delight on its own. So that would be abstract. Number nine wants us to underline each verb and then choose if it is a past, present, or future tense verb. Anna dragged her feet all the way to the mall. What did Anna do? She dragged her feet, and that would be past tense. The ED is an indication that it's a past tense verb. Davis stains the t-shirt with the dye. What does Davis do? He stains the t-shirt, and that would be in the present tense, meaning he's doing it now. In number 10, and or I'm sorry, the last sentence here, Anisha will use this kind of notebook. What will Anisha do? She will use. And will is the helping verb telling us it's happening in the future. All right, and now for number 10, choose the word to complete the sentence, write it on the line. Order, plot, or example. Put the events in blank so they make sense to the reader. Put them in order. All right, guys, nice job again. Grammar is done for the week. I hope everything else is going well. Reach out to your teacher if you have any questions or need any additional help. Don't forget there are brain pot videos for grammar that you can feel free to check out if there's a particular grammar skill that you are needing some extra help with. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day and good luck getting the rest of your assignments done. Take care.